Hello, everyone. I have, I have a timer. Eric clearly knows me well. Um, ripping this microphone out of my hand is going to be difficult. He should have left me for last. Um, I have a few things that I'd like to share today. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my story. I'll try to breeze through that. I'll glaze through over that. Uh, and what I'd like to call is a, is a call to action um, to all small businesses. Uh, across New Jersey, across the nation. I'm Rafael Mata, I'm the president of Gambit Services. Gambit is a word that is synonymous with chess and strategy. It's what I've been basically working towards and doing my entire career. For 25 years, I have helped the underserved, uh, the underprivileged, any programs that you've heard of that help people welfare to work, prisoner reentry, child support, unemployment. Um, I like to be in the weeds. I like to be where there's difficulty. I like to solve those sort of problems. You don't become a millionaire doing that, okay? I'll tell you that right now. It is really a work of passion. Um, and it took me a very long time to get here, uh, to be president of Gambit Services, a company that really focuses on helping people find new revenue, deal with compliance issues, but all in all, is an overall connector of services. All the people that are here today, your SBDCs, your procurement con, they're all here to create a forum where you can get information quickly, get it inexpensively, and take action immediately. It's very important that you take action immediately. Just give me one second here. So just really quickly, how do you become the small business guru? And Eric, I'm gonna own that. I'm gonna own that. I am the small business guru. Uh, last year, I was awarded the SBA uh, award for small business in the state of New Jersey based on how much money I've generated for businesses, how many people I've navigated to success, and in general, just how many services I've been able to produce with very limited resources. We do have limited resources. Um, and my, pre my previous speaker talked about failing. I have failed a lot. And because of that, I won a lot. You win a lot when you fail a lot. You win a lot when you're not afraid to take chances. In my role, I generally consult governments, educational institutions, corporations, and small businesses around developing the programs that you guys benefit from. You'll often see me as the man next to the man. If you look into my trajectory, I am in the limelight, but not necessarily in the center. I like to be the person helping others to achieve their mission. And I hope the procurement con becomes a national brand where people come to learn about how to access government funding, government resources. You've already started to hear about some of those. And God help us all those acronyms the alphabet soup that we just don't understand. That's what these things are here for. In short, I'm a government navigator. And I didn't know that that was actually a thing that was needed. What I eventually ended up coining was a term called equity advocate. Show of hands, anybody ever heard of an equity advocate? Of course you haven't, I'm the first one. <laughs> But I want you to join me. And in order for you guys to join me, you need to understand what that is. I have come up against some of the most challenging government regulations, funding models, problems that us, the business owners, I am a business owner, I am an entrepreneur, I know what the issues are. I have come against so many challenges that it is seems insurmountable. But with people that are equity advocates, people that are in the business like me of connecting people, or maybe you're a business and in your own network you've learned the skill that you can share. By having these equity advocates, you can make a change in the local economy. That's how we're going to grow and get back after the pandemic. The local economy, through organizations like this. The government is here to help you, but they can't do it all for you. They don't have enough resources. We are the resources. We can do this together. And what is an equity advocate? What has my work as an equity advocate produced? I've increased the number of minority businesses receiving government contracts. 
Show of hands, how many of you have heard certifications? And I'll, I'll guarantee you half of you, you don't even really know what that means. Certifications help you access resources. I'm sorry to break this to you, your mom does not want your certification hanging up in the hallway next to your graduation picture and next to your attendance awards. She really is not that impressed by that. Certifications is a way to access resources. I've done that. I've accelerated innovation. Um, we have the Hudson County Office of Business Opportunity, which I'm very proud to say that that's in my past, that's in my DNA. But what I did there is, in the county parks, there was a special technology that a small business had that a larger business did not have. They were selling light bulbs that were much brighter than anything else that the county was spending on at a much cheaper cost. So what's the point? Small business invites innovation. It accelerates innovation, savings, new products. I've also produced new products and services. And what does that mean? What does that look like in the real world? I do it on a community basis. But our corporations that make millions and billions of dollars, they've been doing it right in your face the whole time. Nike, it's a little charged up when you think about the Kaepernick situation. They capitalized on that, and they understood that the sneakers that were being burned in media are not the $500 sneakers that the market that they're looking to access was. I had nice sneakers. Maybe I could have burned them if I spent 60 bucks on them. I don't think I burned the $500 ones for whatever reason. But they're using marketing, and they're using diversity to expand their markets. How about Disney? Show of hands, anybody know Disney here? Everyone knows Disney. Every couple of months, there's a new cartoon character from a different, diverse background, a different culture. Anybody want to take a crack as to why they might be doing that? I'm sure it's because it's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do. We're all, we're a melting pot here. And of course, Disney wants us to all play nice together, right? Money, money, profit. They're embracing the fact that we're different. They're embracing the different cultures. Wouldn't you want somebody to speak to you in your language, in your culture? Wouldn't you want people to take the time and take the respect to speak to you in a manner that really resonates with you, that brings you back to your history? We all do. That's what diversity is. I created new markets, meaning procurement readiness, procurement con. What exactly does that mean? That means getting ready to get contracts with government. In the state of New Jersey alone, people don't realize this, there are 46 departments. There are 570 municipalities. There are 21 counties. All of those doors have opportunities. All those doors have contracts. And finally, I've introduced new paths. New paths for people to achieve success. They're never linear. They're always custom. People usually look at successful people and they think that that's the trajectory that you need to follow. And that oftentimes is not what happens. Equity advocates, as an equity advocate, I've also created more inclusive work environments. Diverse environments create new opportunities, new vantage points. People see things differently. So you create new products. New products and new services, they cannot have competition. They've never existed before, like the term equity advocate in New Jersey. And finally, diversity is a thought. By just creating economic growth through diverse thinking, diverse is usually ascribed to culture, but we're in a new world, we're in the knowledge economy. Be diverse in your thinking. Think of different ways to get things done. Think of the customer first. And I'm halfway through, Eric, I'm sorry, but I have to get this through. You gotta let me, you gotta let me finish. You gotta give me a couple more minutes. Get on the social, dude. <laughs> I, wanna, I wanna give everybody a call to action. And before I do that, I wanna tell you a little bit about myself, as, as I promised. I started, my social, I started my social services career in the South Bronx. I was a six foot two secretary with a 1970s mustache. 
I hope that picture is not circulating anywhere, okay? I'll find it. But Eric will probably find it is correct. That's where I learned about true poverty. I learned where small business doesn't exist in the South Bronx, in the Hunts Point. Uh, some of the most deplorable conditions that I've ever seen in my life. Rats bigger than cats, just destitute, destitute. And that's what got me on this track of trying to help people and trying to get into social services. And flat, fast forward 30 years, how shocking was it to me that the most underserved people in America is the small business? The small business. We hear about them all the time, but we sure have a hard time getting any sort of services. We have a very difficult time navigating, and we're on our own. We don't have health insurance. We, we don't know about lending products. They're not easily, they don't easily come to us. If we don't show up to work, we don't get paid. And there's no unemployment for us. Only in the pandemic did some sort of employment show up. And guess what? It was less than what a worker makes. Okay, okay, there you go, there you go. She knows I'm not lying. It's less, it was less than what a worker makes and you work 60 hours a week, 70 hours a week, something like that. Fast forward from the South Bronx to Goodwill Industries to a health, a pr premier home health care, all these different organizations had the same issue. None of them were creating opportunities for small business. So in 2009, when I started Gambit Services, I started being a connector. I started being someone that was creating opportunities for small business. And now I find myself here presenting 30 years later, talking to small businesses about the same issues. You need to use the resources that are here. You need to speak to the businesses that speak today. They know the journey. They fail often, so they win a lot. Be an equity advocate with me. How does an equity advocate influence change? And then I'm closing it out, Eric. <laughs> it's already giving me the hook. Equity advocates do the following. They clearly identify a problem or impediment. They learn the rules that access opportunity and identify the impediments. That means read, educate yourselves, look up your own information. Don't sit there and just watch what the media tells you. Look at the regulations. All of it is there. The opportunities are there. That's what your competitors are doing, the ones that are succeeding. Equity advocates navigate themselves and navigate others to success. They highlight achievement. They do not complain. They do not complain. Complaining about what's broken in the system, what's the purpose of that? Solve the problem for yourself. Help someone else solve the problem when you know the solution. Teach others to be part of their own rescue. It's very important. Also, when you have the attention of your potential clients or leadership, people that create opportunities, I'm an equity advocate, I'm a, I'm a master in accounting, I know how to solve legal issues, I know how to write RFPs. Once you have made a name for yourself and leaders are looking at you, here are things that you can do. Speak to the person's interest, not to their sense of charity or justice. I hate to be so blunt, but Eric, you did give me a forum to be blunt. They don't care. No one cares. They don't have time to care. It's not personal. Hundreds of thousands, millions of businesses. So, so speak to that leader's interest. What do they need and how do I align myself to their need? When you present the challenge, the problem, remember I said don't complain. You present the challenge, have the solution. Don't talk about it if you don't have the solution. And finally, when presented with an obstacle, find another way until that obstacle removes itself. And for my final comments, and Eric thought I was not going to be on time, by the way, but I will be on time. <laughs> for my final comments, I do really want to commend all of you who are brave enough to start a business. I want to encourage those who have not started a business. I'm a firm believer in that a small business in America is the only way to raise people out of poverty, to truly create jobs, build economies, and really do it ourselves. I am an agent of that. My business helps people do that. Opportunities become clear if you're willing to do things differently. 
I always love to say, if you do what you've always done, you'll get what you've always got. Networking is still the most powerful way to build business, and I'm glad to be here today with Eric and ProcurementCon. It's my second time speaking here. I look forward to talking about all the great things that I will be doing at Gambit and all the great things I'll be doing with Eric and his partners. Thank you very much. Sorry about my 30 second over. Man. <laughs> So, of course, a certificate of appreciation and a Cuban cigar because you kept it under 30 minutes. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> Thank you very much, man.